This is the locomotive train, the great granddaddy of these things, modern trains. But you ask anybody who knows anything about its invention and they'll probably give you two names first, those of Englishman Richard Trevithick and George Stevenson. And as we say in England, too bloody right. See, Cornish man, wait, Cornish? Yes, that's people who come from here and speak like this. Hey girl, look at that, I like your cut, you were to get evil. But don't ask, he doesn't know either. Cornish man, amateur wrestler, explorer and all-round action hero, Richard Trevithick was responsible for giving the world the first full-scale working steam engine in 1802. And engineer George Stevenson, 20 years later, converted Trevithick's invention into something that carried passengers on public railways, earning him the title the father of the railways. But what if I told you that Trevithick and Stevenson's invention was incomplete until a black inventor you've never heard of came along? a guy whose parents were fugitives who at the time he was born hadn't long fled slavery in Kentucky for Canada. Meet Elijah McCoy, the man who invented the simplest, most quietly ingenious pro tip in maybe the whole history of mankind, making this already revolutionary invention that much more revolutionary and practical. The story you're about to hear is mind-blowing. It's one of human ingenuity in the face of titanic odds. It's about a man who changed the face of travel and industry at a time when many of his own countrymen didn't even consider him fully human. A man who went from zero to hero and then to zero again and was on his way back up to hero when a very strange thing happened to him. For the conspiracy edge, you'll have to wait till the end of the video. For now, as men and women of culture are sometimes wont to do, I advise you to reach for your pipe, a cup of tea, <clears throat> hit those like and subscribe buttons, sit back and let me tell you about Elijah J. McCoy. Nobody actually knows what the J in Elijah J. McCoy stands for, but that shouldn't surprise us because like many blacks with links to the antebellum south, forcibly separated from their African roots, their adoptive European names were often taken from the white dominated world they lived in leaving many in America with little to no personal connection to their middle names and sometimes even their first names. For McCoy, his white dominated world was here, Colchester, Ontario in Canada. One of 11 children born to formerly enslaved George and Mildred McCoy, Elijah was born on May 2, 1844. His parents had escaped Kentucky via the Underground Railroad. What they didn't know was that their son was about to take the railroad part of the family story pretty literally. Now, although Canada didn't practice slavery, that didn't make it a black paradise either. Life in the 1800s for black people in the Americas generally was still just a little difficult. Like everything else, schools in Canada were segregated, so that when McCoy turned 15 and his parents realized his amazing skill with mechanics and engineering, there was only one place they could send their gifted son if he was to make something of himself. Scotland where in 1859 there was officially no segregation. And so off it was to the University of Edinburgh for Wee McCoy. But life in Scotland for a lone black teenager in 1859 was probably less like this and more like this. Not to worry because Elijah ignored it all, got stuck into his studies and seven years later completed his education in Edinburgh, earning himself the title Master Mechanic and Engineer. Now with words like those after your name, who wouldn't be confident about the future? McCoy was. He could now return with his head held high back to America, specifically Ishpilanti, Michigan, where his family had relocated and his father was doing quite nicely for himself, having established a tobacco business. He might even use his father's name and connections in his bid to make something of himself. Heck why not? America had just put an end to slavery after a bloody civil war and just because mom and dad started life with a bit of bad luck in the US of A didn't mean young Elijah McCoy couldn't make something of himself there. Psh, shoot. Matter of fact, every company stateside ought to now be looking for decent, fine black gentlemen with plenty of brains to help spare their engineering departments. Yeah, McCoy got a hard wake up call with that one. Because when he arrived in Michigan, it was a case of jobs for me and not for thee. White America just wasn't there yet, nope, not when the overwhelming belief was that black people couldn't possibly be smart enough to engineer, much less invent. Besides, the Church of Satan had only just released its Bible seven years prior, 
Back then, they called it on the origin of the species, and Charles Darwin's steam stack was already giving a lot of white folk all the excuse they needed to look at blacks as somehow closer to apes on the evolutionary table. Ignorance. Just ignorance. Besides, this one looks a lot like Putin. Look at him. Look at him. <gasps> Reverse racism. Please spare me. Back in Michigan, life had a lesson in humility for McCoy. See, in Michigan, McCoy had to lay aside all the knowledge and technical nows he acquired in Scotland and just take on work occasionally as a fireman. But what he really wanted to do was with mechanics and engineering. Except he couldn't. The closest American society would let a man with McCoy's African heritage get to engineering was shoveling coal in boiler rooms and oiling train wheel bearings. So McCoy rolled up his sleeves and did just that, for the time being. Because it's right here where 99.9% .9 of men would have let their dreams die slowly and quietly. Except McCoy was part of the 0.1% and not that 99.9%. .9. And guess what? You are too, if you're still watching. You've got to be. White, black or piccolo green, McCoy's story speaks to you on some level. Grit, determination and the God-given, never-say-die human spirit, what we call the trill and the black trill black we set this platform up to tell the stories of people who are often shoved to the side minimized painted with the broad brush of victimhood or sometimes outright whitewashed but you can help us tell our stories the right way so that future generations of black and white people can know them too and be inspired towards a better future together join others become a channel member today and you can help us decide what topics and historical figures we cover in the future but hey, if that's not for you and you want to get something a little more tangible for your money, head over to our website, link below and grab yourself something fresh for the summer just to let the people know we're taking over. Telling our stories with pride and style like we used to. From Cush all the way to Compton. Right, back to the OG, Elijah J. McCoy. See, McCoy didn't just say no to letting his engineering dream die. No, no, no. This guy got really ticked off and said, yo Don made me real mad now, forget engineering, heck, forget working for anybody altogether. Down inside his workshop in Ishpilanti, Michigan, McCoy set to finding a way of putting himself out of work for good. How? Well, back in McCoy's days, trains had to stop to have their moving parts oiled. Matter of fact, that was McCoy's job. Imagine that, a two hour train journey taking four or even five, all because the trains needed to be oiled like the tin man out of wizard of oz every hour or so in 1872 mccoy found the answer to this problem this little thing right here what he called is automatic lubricator for the oiling of steam engines of locomotives and ships the significance of mccoy's invention is difficult to overstate here let machinerylubrication.com tell you about it during the first industrial revolution before mccoy's invention lubrication was done manually a time-consuming and often unreliable process. Engineers would have to stop the machinery to lubricate the moving parts, which reduced productivity and increased the risk of equipment failure. This is where McCoy saw room for improvement. He believed that there had to be a better way to lubricate machinery and he set out to find a solution. And the original text and drawings for the patent are available to view on Google Patents should you wish to peruse. Uh, peruse sorry. Like I said, it's difficult to overstate what this tiny little mechanism did, not just for trains, but for other locomotive systems in the 1800s. By 1899, the Michigan Bureau of Labor and Industrial Statistics recorded this about McCoy's invention. Quote, Mr. Elijah McCoy, engineer and inventor of Detroit, is not only known throughout the state but also all over the United States and Canada as a competent engineer and inventor of the McCoy Lubricator which is in use today on nearly all railroads throughout the United States and Canada. Close quote. Wow, notice they had to take the shine off a little, because we all know coming up with breakthrough pieces of tech only needs you to be competent when it comes to us melanated folk. And again, that's why it's important to tell our stories for ourselves, because let's face it, you let others tell it, and whether they mean to or not, they just won't tell it right. For example, on the Wikipedia entry on lubrication, Elijah McCoy gets all of three sentences wedged in between other names. 
as though his little automatic lubricator was a footnote in history. McCoy revolutionized rail travel when he was supposed to be shoveling coal and he didn't stop there either. With all the cash he made from his little invention, he decided to innovate some more. Most of his later patents dealt with lubricating systems, including one in 1898 which added a glass sight feed tube to monitor the rate of lubricant delivery, whereas some of his inventions were more day-to-day -day things such as the foldable ironing board and a lawn sprinkler system. But right here's the tragedy of Elijah McCoy's life. Because of the colour of his skin, he struggled to get recognition for a lot of his other improvements to mechanical lubrication, having to sell his patents to richer white folk just to have the capital to carry on inventing. And having sold his inventions to others, his name wouldn't go on to appear on many of his other influential patents. This is the story again and again when looking into black history. Many of our achievements as a community are washed away into a larger, more dominant white narrative often allowing people with ill intention to paint us out of history or to pretend everything we did was thanks solely to others. I mean, this guy commenting on a YouTube short on McCoy gets it when he says, can't get a movie on Elijah McCoy, but they can make 200 slave movies, SMDH. To which Red Hobo replied, for what? Inventing an ironing board, a controllable oil dispenser and a garden sprinkler. This guy still working out how to set up his own ironing board down there in his mama's basement and he talking about for what? We'll ignore the ignorant, shall we? Now, remember the conspiracy theory that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? Well, here it is. It's this channel's belief that there are quite a few more inventions that McCoy would have had to sell off just to stay afloat. We just don't know how many more and which ones specifically because his name obviously don't appear on the records for them. What we do know is that near the end of his life, McCoy had come into enough money to set up something called the Elijah McCoy Manufacturing Company in order to manufacture lubricators with his own name on it. This was a boss move from McCoy, one that could have changed the course of black history. Remember that Michigan State document I quoted earlier? It stated that McCoy's name was known nationwide and even globally for his automatic lubricator and that his invention was being used in almost every engine across the country. In fact, many people swear that the phrase the real McCoy was first used by industry men among each other when requesting McCoy's lubricator instead of the numerous knockoffs that came after. Would McCoy's manufacturing company capitalizing on his reputation for quality invention have been too much for big business at a time when people that looked like McCoy weren't supposed to be at the top of anything good? Is that why McCoy was involved in a mysterious motor accident in 1922, an accident which killed his wife and left him with injuries he never recovered from? I mean, who dies in a car accident in 1922? anyone seen the cars from 1922? I got a lot more goes faster than these things. The popular Model T for example had a top speed of 40 miles per hour. I mean... I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Yeah, right. Well, if my paranoid hunch is correct, then sadly some industry men managed to put the hard brakes on a 78-year-old McCoy in 1922. What do you guys think? Uh, is there something to my conspiracy musings or am I straight out of line? Let me know down in the comments below. Well, in 1929, the real McCoy died largely from the injuries he had sustained seven years earlier in that motor accident. He died aged 85. But where others might forget, we will not. All hail the trill and the black, the father of automatic lubrication, Elijah J. McCoy. Special thanks to Black Rampage 2 for help in the production of this video. Why is he Black Rampage 2 and not 1? Because it's the return baby. From Kush to Compton, this has been Trill Black, no doubt.